Hi guys, Spud Cubs here for a live PID tutorial. I'm going to be doing it fast, easy, and simple for you guys so that when you go into the game and you do it yourself or you apply PIDs to any other part of your life, you as well can do it fast, easily, and simply. So first of all, I need to explain that I have a dedicated helicopter blade spinner on the top set up for my altitude. As you can see, it's set up just for my altitude. As well, the PID controller itself is a general purpose PID controller found in the control section of the build menu. Now this, contr this uh, PID controller is set up for its input being altitude above mean sea level. That means the altitude above the ocean, regardless of our altitude above the land. This altitude is also displayed on the right hand side of the screen. It currently says 92 meters altitude. My output is the out is propulsion vertical. It's the altitude output, the up output, the propeller on the top here. And the set point, the reference point of this PID is 200, which translates into 200 meters altitude. We're currently at 92 meters altitude, meaning it has 108 meters to go before it gets to its reference point, the point that it wants to get to. In PID controller, there's proportional integral derivative. Now the P, the proportional part of PID, basically means if your error, or in this case, the distance away from 200 meters altitude, our, if our error is large and positive, our P is going to be large and positive. All parts of the equation are multiplied by the gain. Since our gain is currently zero, our P is currently zero. If we raise our gain up to Let's just put it at 0.05. You can see that our dedicated helicopter blade spinner is now in full throttle, trying to go up towards 100 meters altitude. Let's see what happens as it goes up to 100 meters altitude. Take note of the speed of the helicopter blade spinner as it goes up. I've unfrozen the vehicle, still at full throttle. As it gets closer, we're now at 200. Now it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it approaches 200. Notice something as well. I am going to drop the gain back down really quick so you can see something. Look at the speed as we get over 200. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep going to the wrong menu. Look at the speed of the propeller as we go over 200 meters altitude. It goes negative. It goes negative because as the error is negative, the P becomes negative. Now to explain integral and derivative, it's a little more complicated. Integral is a little bit like error over time. And so our integral time is actually off. We're not getting any of the integral added to the equation. I'm gonna put the gain to, oh, let's, let's actually put it higher. Let's put it higher than it needs to be, so it goes a little a little wacko. I, I, I want to make it so it's not smooth, so I should I could show you the integral time and what it does. Okay, as as you can see, we're we're kind of oscillating over 200 meters. We're we're kind of there, not exactly. What integral time does is it takes the error compounded over time. And so if you have a buildup of error, let's say we drop our gain to zero. Our error is building up over time. We're not at 200 meters altitude. The longer we're not at 200 meters altitude, the more the integral time, or the more the integral value is increasing. And if we set it to some arbitrary number of say 30 seconds, the integral value will compound over 30 seconds. So it's been 30 seconds, and obviously we're not at 200 meters altitude, we're very low. So if I turn the gain up, the integral will be very high and will shoot us higher than the gain would even normally shoot us. Um, and so we're gonna have a clear overshoot of altitude here. Um, and then as soon as we get over 200 meters altitude, the integral is gonna kick in because it'll be compounding the negative uh, error of it being over the altitude desired. I'm gonna activate the throttle right now and you'll see the speed going up to 200, going up to over, we went over. Up, up, 
now it's compounding over these 30 seconds. It's still an error from before. It's, it's taking some lag time, taking some lag time. And you'll, it'll, it'll kind of ebb out over time, you'll see here, right? Sometimes your integral time might be too low to where it's taking into account, let's say, the last four seconds of error. And so it might act a little jittery because, you know, it's, it's a little more reactive, more fast reacting to things happening to it. Um, so if we drop this back down with a lower integral time, you'll see a faster reaction. And we don't have to go all the way to the bottom again. I can actually just activate this right now for you guys. Just notice when it gets to 200 meters altitude, it'll be a much faster reaction and see we're, we're not staying at 232 anymore. We're dropping down quite rapidly, quite rapidly. Now, if I drop the gain again, increase integral time to something much, much, much greater to show you guys how it will stay compounded over time. Let's just try 200. And we go back to 0.05 gain. You'll see that we actually didn't give it very much time to compound the error, but because it's also compounding error from a longer portion of time, it's, it's kind of meeting this mean value. It's kind of slowly inching towards this mean value that it wants. But it's, it's not gonna get there because it's always only calculating the error. Now that's where derivative time comes in. So derivative time is kind of like the pushback, right? It's kind of like the brakes on a car. If you think about this like a car, actually I have this written down in very nice words on my paper. Uh, the P, which isn't present here um, to adjust, but it's essentially like your correction speed. It's multiplying the gain times your error, essentially. It's the speed of your car. But the integral time is the acceleration of your car. It's how fast it can react. It's how slowly it reacts. Now you get to a turn and things kind of start changing up. That's when you need your derivative time. That's when you need the brakes on your car so you don't overshoot anything. You don't overshoot the point you're trying to get to. You need a parallel park. You can't ram into another car at the intersection. That's where derivative time comes into. You see our radians per second on this dedicated helicopter blade is going up and down, up and down, trying to just meet this value. It's just hovering around this value that would let it hover perfectly at 200. We can see this actually happening in the graph. If I scroll down on the PID, you'll see it happening. It's this little blue sine wave that's happening. That's the up and down, up and down of the output. Now, if we go into the derivative time, we can try to estimate how much time we need to adjust for it. Oh, way too much. Uh, well, that looks about it. Um, we're kind of pushing back uh, a little bit. Right, And the more overcorrection you have, the more pushback you need. Now, let me show you what happens when you have too much pushback. And I'll make a wheel tutorial because this fits right into uh, why wheel jitter happens. When you have too much derivative time, okay, we're kind of already at 200 meters altitude, so there's not much error. You'll start seeing as error develops, it just goes crazy because as it's trying to compensate for that error it wildly overcompensates throws it into the negative as you see it's 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 wildly throwing it around everywhere we can prop that derivative time back down and as you can see it stabilizes pretty quickly because we're not overcorrecting anymore in fact if we get it right into a sweet spot um we might be able to see okay so our our, our, our propeller speed that we're trying to get to, that is the perfect speed, we're coming closer and closer to it by the decimal. You see it's 0 0.9419 something. If, let's, let's try one, see if it gets closer. That's getting it closer. So as I have my, my gain and my integral time already set up, 
right? The derivative time is just going to affect these. You can have really any gain or integral time as you want because the game will just tell you how fast your PID is going to be, how much power is going to put into its movement. Your integral time is going to tell you how reactive it is, and your derivative time is just going to correct for those little bits of error from the PID itself. As you can see, we're, we're getting dangerously close to hitting another decimal spot. I wanna, I wanna get that decimal spot. Is it two? Can we go to two? I think it overshot it too. I'm gonna try 0.5, just as a control experiment. That was closer, 0.5 is closer. We actually earned another decimal spot. We have 0 0.941 now. Oh my God, I'm excited. I'm gonna stop with this, but you get my point, guys. Um, that's basically all you need to know about PIDs. I did only do altitude on the PID here, uh, but you can apply this to Roll, you can apply this to yaw, you can apply it to pitch. Uh, if you have the ship wiggles, if your ships wiggle when they move, put this on the AI PIDs, but apply it to yaw. If you have a hovercraft and it's wobbling back and forth, uh, you know, apply it to your roll or pitch or whatever uh, axis of movement is wobbling about. But I hope you guys found this both entertaining and informative. Uh, I hope this didn't take up too much of your time. If there's anything you can do back for me to give back to old Papa Spud, Spud Cubs, just share this video to anyone who might, uh, you know, get some help from it. Share it to anyone who might also enjoy this video or to any of your friends that might find this game cool or might like my content. This has been Spud Cubs, and I hope you have a buoyant day. Why? 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 Why?